All right, so hi, I'm Nolan Dalla. You know what I do. This is the NFL week number six. Really hard to believe we're almost a third of the season uh, now complete, uh, in the regular season I'm speaking of. And I'm pretty happy with the way things are going, being uh, about 12 games over the 500 mark, despite some disappointments and um, bad beats and what have you. But that's going to happen when you bet a lot of games and you play the full uh, you know, every single week. Uh, also, the contest doing pretty well. I've got a couple of tickets that are in, in really good shape. I'm speaking about the Las Vegas uh, uh, gambling syndicate. There's a lot of people invested in that as well. So, uh, again, it's nice. It's it'd be nice to be, you know, in the top ten or the top five or in number one. But realistically, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going because I think, you know, as we get more information, uh, I don't want to say things get easier, but access to more information, I think. Is good and uh, the first part of the season is always a little more challenging let's get right to it I try to at least say something about every single NFL game and if I have a pick uh, then I'll provide that as well we'll start with the early game which is the London game I think it's um, you know kicks off at something like 6 30 Pacific time over in London here and uh, it's the Chicago Bears playing the Jacksonville Jaguars and this game when it when the line opened at roughly one and a half to two Two for the Bears. I, I heard some people say, oh, if you like the Bears, you better bet them now because the Bears are going to, you know, probably go to two and a half to three maybe and, you know, lock in that number now. And, um, you know, I, I almost did. I almost fell for that trap. But right now it's uh, Jacksonville uh, is only uh, at, at plus one. So a little money coming in on the Jaguars, surprisingly. It's a big mismatch defensively. The Bears a much better defense, and uh, the, the the Jaguars can't stop anybody. They almost lost last week. They're one and four. They almost threw away that game against the Colts last week. And meanwhile, we're watching uh, the quarterback play in Chicago. Seems to get a little better every single week. Uh, so you know Williams is is playing a little better each week and uh, is throwing the ball well, even throwing the ball deep, which he wasn't doing earlier in the week. And uh, you know, uh, uh, but I think there's some bias here in favor of the Jaguars because they play in London every year. Some people say that oh, the Jaguars are the the adopted London team is the Jaguars and the team you know plays better over there for some reason uh i i don't know how how much of a factor that's worth if anything but uh that being said i would probably take the bears here but i, I haven't pulled the trigger with any kind of a wager so i'm long way of saying i'm passing on that game the washington commanders playing at baltimore uh these are the east coast games the uh 10 a.m games or the 1 p.m games if you're on the east coast but this is uh, this is really strange there sure is a lot of respect for the ravens which i think is undeserved uh here they're the Ravens are laying uh, six, five and a half, six, sometimes six and a half in a in a few places. And gosh, Washington just gets no respect of, despite getting better every single week. Talk about an offensive machine. They're just they just I think they've scored something something like twenty seven out of their last thirty four drives in the last three games. So th this this offense is almost unstoppable. Uh, um, and, and now they're playing Baltimore, supposedly a better defense. They're playing on the road. Uh, we'll see. But that's a lot of points to give a a four and one Washington Commanders team. So I lean Commanders here. It just seems like an automatic uh, play to play the you know the team that's improving every week. A very exciting team to watch that can score points against a team that's you know the Ravens have. You know, not not really put a, a 60 minutes of football together any single week. They've they've had problems in every single game, uh, even though they're three and two. So uh, I do lean Washington, but I'm not waking making a wager there. My first wager uh, on the card here this week is the Arizona Cardinals in the first half plus three and a half. Now the game line is five, five and a half, six. The Green Bay Packers at home, returning home at three and two, I believe. Uh, and uh, Arizona's coming off enormous, enormous upset victory in San Francisco, going on the road for the second straight week. And the feeling is that the, uh, that the Arizona Cardinals have a huge letdown here. And I think that's possible. Yes, it is possible. Uh, so I'm not going to play the... the, the um, 
I'm not going to play the Cardinals in the game, but I think when you're talking about just 30 minutes of the first half of football, getting three and a half at minus 120, give me the field goal and then the hook on that with a team that plays pretty well in the first half. Offensively, they're they're dangerous. They seem to play better against uh, uh, good competition. By the way, much tougher schedule here if you look at uh, uh, the Cardinals who have played Detroit. They played Buffalo. They played Washington. Um, and they played San Francisco. That's a gauntlet of tough teams. So uh, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, Arizona will stay with the Packers, who really don't deserve to be laying this kind of number even at home. So I like them in the first half. I'm speaking about the Arizona Cardinals. That's my first play of the week. The Patriots are starting uh, May. They finally pulled uh, Jacoby Brissett, and they're going to be starting uh, May in his, the rookie in his first start at home. Uh, they're getting seven. The Patriots are hosting the Houston Texans, who have been just a monumental disappointment format for betters. I think they're one and uh, one and four, maybe three and two and three or one and four against the spread. But just again, haven't looked uh, just totally solid like this was supposed to be the team that was going to win the AFC South and maybe they still will. And they're, they're, they're have a very deceptive uh, record, I think, but they, they, they play a lot of close games. They don't blow teams out like they should be. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm really leaning on taking seven here but do you want to play a really horrible team with a patchwork offensive line uh starting a rookie quarterback even getting a touchdown at home i'm passing all that temptation although i do think that smart money will be on the patriots in this game in this game excuse me <coughs> the uh, tampa bay buccaneers uh flew into New Orleans early this week because of the hurricane in Florida, and I think they'll be fully prepared for the Saints. Now, the big story in this game was uh, Carr, the quarterback for the Saints, coming off the Monday night loss. That was really a bad performance by the Saints here. Now they've lost three straight after op- after opening the season 2-0. and Saints have looked really, really progressively worse each of the last three weeks. Now, that, now Kansas City can do that to you, so... Um, you know, maybe we can, you know, give them a little bit of uh, uh, slack on that. But I still think that coming home on a short week now, playing against a division rival, that normally be a spot where I would want to take points, but not here with a rookie quarterback. The quarterback is Rattler is his name. That's really the name, Rattler. Uh, he was drafted by the Las Vegas Raiders, and uh, I don't know if he even took a snap last season, but he's starting uh, here for the Saints the first game. Uh, he, he's starting because Carr is out. So I I'm not going to even take the points there. I did play the Tampa Bay Bucks on the money line. I got them very early in the week at minus 160 or 165. I forgot the number. I just figured this is a game. Tampa Bay coming off a bye. Pretty good team. Team that's always underestimated in the last couple of years with uh, Mayfield at quarterback. I think Tampa Bay, they're prepared. They've been in New Orleans most of this week. I think they'll come out and at least win this game, especially against a rookie quarterback. Saints are banged up as well. Really bad offensive line play as we've seen from the Saints, and they're banged up again this week. That does not bode well for the Saints here. So uh, that's my second play of the week. The Browns going into Philadelphia is another early game. Uh, Eagles coming off the bye. Really hard to figure out the Eagles. They they play good West one week, play you suck the next, Jekyll Hyde kind of a team. Hard to figure them out sometimes. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, Criticism rightfully leveled at the Eagles, who don't or don't seem particularly well coached. Uh, uh, but but here uh, the Browns have just been an absolute shit show uh, this season, and it really starts with Watson, the coaching staff. There there uh, there's a lot of discontent within the locker room. We saw not just the the, the fact that the, the Browns last week, after losing um, uh, the previous game in Las Vegas, we thought I had the Browns last week playing in Washington. I thought that's going to be a good bounce back opportunity for the Browns but boy they mailed that one in they gave up 40 something points to the commanders they've been just throttled the last couple of weeks lost two road games now they've got to play on the road for the third straight week they've lost the locker room no confidence in Watson Watson we could see in our coaching change maybe in a couple of weeks with the Browns the way they're playing and uh, so uh, I, you know, do I want to lay though eight and a half it opened up at maybe it's nine nine and a half my friend Latin 
Matt Lessinger told me this will close at 10. Um, you know, if you're going to get the you bet the Eagles, you bet them now. Should have bet them a few days ago. But I do think the Eagles are probably the play here. But I'm not accustomed to laying, uh, playing big favorites. What I did, it's too late now for those of you watching, but I teased uh, the Eagles at 8.5 down to 2.5. That's the Wong teaser, the basic strategy teaser. So I did that early in the week because I figured the Eagles are going to win this game. But I don't know if they cover double digits anyway. So that was my play is the Eagles early in the week when you could still get the 8.5 and tease them down to minus two and a half, hosting a horrible Cleveland Browns team. Colts are playing at the Titans. This is a fascinating game for a lot of reasons. Uh, uh, it's it, it just bizarre that the Colts, with a quarterback change, Flacco came in in the Pittsburgh game two weeks ago. They upset the Steelers talking about the Colts. And then uh, Flacco has almost a career game last week. And even though the Colts lost the game, they still, I think Flacco <coughs> threw for four touchdown passes and like almost, you know, 400 yards or something. And he looked fantastic, 39 years old. And, you know, and, and now they're going back to Richardson. So Flacco comes in, they, they, the offense plays much better for the Colts. And now all of a sudden they're yanking him and going back to Richardson. So I don't know what this is going to do for the continuity of that offense, which was clicking. It's the defense that's the problem with the Colts. It's not the offense, especially now with Flacco. And by the way, against Pittsburgh and um, uh, last week against the Jaguars, I mean, that's uh, you know, th those are those are those are two quality wins in my, in our, our performances there by that offense. So I I would say that I would say that that this this is probably a spot where I would take the Titans because the line has moved down to just one point. The Titans are favored by one. I think with Richardson starting, especially if uh, Taylor is out, the running back for the for Colts, uh, you know, what weapons does he have? So I, boy, I just hold my nose with the Titans because they, they disappointed me several times this season. But off the bye, this is kind of a circle of wagons game at home for Tennessee. The line is certainly right, a, a bargain, playing a terrible defensive team. So I would take the Titans, although I did not uh, put any actual cash down on that game. Chargers at the Broncos. Um, you know, the Chargers are laying three on the road here. This is just an automatic, you know, I, the Denver defense is, is vastly underrated. It's just, uh, that they're key, the, that's the reason this team is competitive, and we, if we get any kind of performance out of Knicks, Knicks, the, the rookie quarterback, and the Broncos offense, this team's going to, you know, win outright uh, and upset the, the rival Chargers at home. Now, the Chargers are coming in rested in the division game, but anytime you get an AFC West uh, road favorite, I, I am automatically uh, unless the team is just horrendous, I'm almost automatically looking at the home dog in most division games, but especially in this particular division. So I lean very heavily toward Denver at plus three in this game. Again, I haven't made a wager yet, but I, 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 I might. Raiders and the Steelers, I've got a prop on this game. Uh, the, the, the Raiders are, are you know, just played a horrible game last week in Denver. Uh, Pittsburgh lost to the Cowboys. Lost two games they shouldn't have lost. They lost to the Colts. They lost to the Cowboys. And now they're at three and two and have lost two straight. Now this is a game with this is the get well game because they're playing the Raiders. They're probably going to be more uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fans in that stadium here in Las Vegas, and there will be Raider fans. That's my guess. Anyway, uh, I I don't really like a side here. The Steelers are laying three on the road again. I just don't like laying points in the road, especially more than a field goal. Uh, and and we've got a new quarterback. We got a quarterback change for for uh, the Raiders this week. Uh, so I, I would say that the the play here is probably. I think we're going to see a game of, <coughs> excuse me, field goals. I think we're going to see you know, fairly conservative play calling. I think both teams will move the ball somewhat, but you're not going to see like a lot of crazy plays. Or, or it's not going to be a high scoring affair. But I think we could see a fair amount of uh, field goals. And that stadium, the Las Vegas stadium, is very conducive to, to field goal kicking being indoors we got two very good kickers with Carlson and the Raiders and uh, Boswell Chris Boswell for the Steelers both above average kickers with long distance potential so the six and a half is the number on both of them six and a half is the over under on the points total on both Boswell and uh, Car Carlson I think both kickers will go over in this game all we need is again field goal field goal 
extra point. You know, that's seven points. That's what we want from both of them. Let me have a 9-9 final. I'm thrilled. That's three field goals. So we'll see how that goes. But that's my prop. Uh, that's my kind of prop bet of the week there with, with the two. Very unusual. I would take both kickers in a game. But I think one actually plays into the other. In other words, if it's a field goal game, the other team plays for the field goal, you know, to tie late or something like that, you know. If, if it's a touchdown game, they're down by seven or multiples of seven, you'll see teams going for it more and fourth down and things. So it's funny that there there is there is actually a relationship between uh, uh, kickers and field goal kind of games and, say, touchdown shootout kind of games where field goals, they're going to not go. It's, it's, that's a long, long way of saying I'm expecting uh, uh, teams to get boggled down in the red zone and I expect, a, you know, a 16 you know 16 13 kind of a game something like that so we'll see <clears throat> the falcons and the panthers uh, this is just a shit game the panthers i don't know how anybody even though i think there'll be some money on the panthers here uh, i don't know how you could take carolina here uh, that defense if you watch them against the bears last week if you watch that game i saw a team and you don't see this happen in the nfl very often because these are professional athletes i saw the carolina panthers defensive players giving up you could see them in the end zone when they were letting the the Bears score yet another touchdown or get another big first down or something. You could see the descent and you could see them barking at each other, upset. And you could just see that, that this team is – and the, the defense was – Carolina didn't have many strengths, but the defense was supposed to be at least average. Whether or not, they've been horrendous all season long. Uh, and, and so I don't think, I don't really care who starts at quarterback for the um, the Panthers, even if it's Dalton, the veteran. Uh, the offense has played a little better with him. But I just, they, they can't stop anybody. And the, the Falcons, of course, coming off a, a big win against, uh, in overtime against um uh, what am I drawing? Uh, Tampa Bay, of course. And now they've had 10 days of rest, preparing to go on the road. Uh, I, I guess I might lean toward Atlanta, but, uh, you know, when every time you, you take one of these obvious plays with a really bad team and bet against them, they, they come up and bite you. So I, this is a game I'm passing on. Uh, Lions and Cowboys, one of the best bets of the week. In fact, I think it is my best bet of the week. I've got a couple of them. This would be one of them. We, the Detroit Lions are minus three. Big revenge spot. we got really one of the top offenses in football. Dallas reeling. Lucky, lucky, lucky to win its last two games, the Cowboys. I mean, uh, 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 really a subpar performance against the New York Giants a few weeks ago. And then they, they uh, a fourth down and goal, they scored and win the game, which, you know, credit them for that. But um, uh, Dallas just is, is not in sync. Uh, prior to that, there were two devastating home losses. Last three home games for Dallas, by the way, they've been just absolutely horrendous, falling behind by multiple touchdowns each of the last three games, going back to the Green Bay playoff game last season. So the Baltimore game, the New Orleans game, they were down by you know a million points. And now they're back at home against a very good Detroit Lion team, who by the way is going to be pissed as hell from what happened last season. That's just, this is one, you know, this is a very emotional team the Lions are. This is a team that you, you know you know the coach with Campbell and they, this is a team that does play on a lot of emotion and motivation. And I think you could see that little extra, you know, incentive or intangible play in the Lions' favor here with the Lions minus three. I think I think this is a statement game for the Lions. They haven't played real very well, even in their, their four games. Uh, they haven't really, like, put put together, I, I call it a statement performance. Uh, uh Although they did beat Seattle in a, in a pretty impressive fashion their last game. And now they've had a week to repair for a big game against the Cowboys in a revenge spot. I think Detroit's just a absolute... I think this is just the best play of the week, even though I'm laying the three. It's not a really good number, not a number I normally would like to lay, but all the factors just point to the Lions here. Uh, so the the, uh, the Lions are my one of my plays of the week. The other play of the week I have is the New York Giants. I why why are the Cincinnati Bengals who are one and four and can't stop anybody, can't stop anybody on on defense. Uh, why in the hell are they laying more than a field goal to the New York Giants who have been a very feisty team, especially defensively? This is the number 11 uh, team in the NFL ranked uh, defensively, the Giants are. And if the offense just doesn't make mistakes, and they haven't been making mistakes, uh, uh, they should be able to at least stay in this game. So I, I just don't, you know, why, why is a 1-4 and four team with a horrendous defense uh, laying this kind of a number against the Giants? I'd put this close to pick them or maybe the 
Maybe the Bengals won or one and a half or something, but three and a half, I, I kept looking. What am I missing here? And uh, there's a chance Neighbors, the wide receiver, number one receiver in the NFL, even though he missed a game, he's still leading in a lot of statistical categories. There's a chance he comes back and plays in the Sunday night game here. So I think a lot of things favor the Giants. They have not looked good in their last, that they're only two home games. Again, a statement game for the Giants coming off a huge upset win, which I had predicted. Nobody had the Giants last week. I said the Giants are the best play on the board. Are you kidding me? And uh, it's nice to be right on occasion, but uh, I, I'm going to keep riding that horse until they, they buck me off of it. So uh, I'll take the New York Giants here, plus three and a half at home in the Sunday night game. And then I'm going to kind of end this tape or this uh, recording with a whimper. In other words, uh, you know, nothing really exciting. I just have no opinion on the Jets' bills. Big coaching change in the, for the Jets, of course, was the news. There's a lot of, I don't know, I assume that's a distraction. But here's what happens with a lot of professional teams when they change the coach or the manager. or you know, Whenever they make a, a, a change like this, it's oftentimes will inspire at least temporarily in that very first game back will inspire a, 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 a better performance and I, I'm not sure why it is that's just uh, again one of those emotional intangibles that motivates athletes uh, uh, th this is now Aaron Rodgers team whatever you want to say about him and his influence there on Salah's dismissal with uh, the Giants but this is now his team and you know, it's his thing and I don't know maybe the team rallies around him for one game against the rival Bill's coming off also uh, I think this is their third straight road game but coming off a tough game where they they lost to the Texans they could have won that game uh, also you saw the concussion or near concussion with uh, Allen I assume he's back and okay but I, you did, I, if you saw his head get slammed to the turf there, I, 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 I'm not going to play the uh, uh, the Bills as a favorite here. I just I just think that's a trap, but I certainly can't bet the Jets either. So I, I talked a lot about the game already, but I really have no opinion on that. So I've given you my plays for the week. I hope that this uh, um, is something that some of you enjoy and uh, hopefully maybe make some money from it. And uh, I try to do a little something different every week. I think next week what I'll do is last week I was with Matt Lessinger and we did some things with the Golden Nugget. Uh, this next week, I think I'll try to show you what the Westgate is like when I put in the contest at the uh, the Westgate Super Contest uh, down on the Strip. So I'll try to mix it up a little more each week if I can. Anyway, thanks for watching. Good luck to all of you and good luck to us. Bye-bye.